In this video, I'll be making a three-dimensional stone wall backdrop, building the Felbeast torso and neck, and putting it all together to make the finished Felbeast photo wall. To create the base for the wall, I've folded down one edge of a large plastic sheet and secured it with hot glue and grommets to create sturdy anchor points. I'm using that reinforced edge to hang the plastic from my display wall with some cable ties and wire. I first looked through some pictures of different types of stone walls to get an idea of what would work, so now we're going to sketch out a pattern of stones and make sure that it all fits together nicely. Now we can build out the stones with scraps of plastic, bits of expanding foam left over from making the torso, crumpled aluminum foil, a lot of hot glue, and some slices of corrugated plastic that will form the jagged broken chunks of rock. I'm focusing on the area around where the torso will be bursting through, then blending the texture out towards the edges. It all looks a bit crazy right now, so let's make it solid. I'm using spray adhesive and scraps of thin plastic drop cloths to cover all the gaps, then hitting it with the heat gun to shrink the plastic and really define those stones. Now it's time to paint. The first coat is a light stone color, and then touch up with black at the joints so as not to lose that stone pattern. I started out trying to paint this on the floor in my tiny patio, but that was not working at all. So I had to put a few nails in the wall out there and just temporarily hang the whole thing. And that's much better. With my base coat done and the mortar lines reestablished, I wanted to start building up layers of shadows to bring out the three dimensionality of the textured centers and to simulate depth in the flat areas. I'm using pieces of torn paper to mask off rough rocky shapes and then lightly misting on a darker granite color. Using that same painty paper, I'm dabbing more paint in some areas to add some variety. And then next up is a dark brown, which I'm applying mostly along the mortar lines and then just blending into the edges of the stones so that they appear to project more. Then more shadowing with the dark gray to blend everything together and better to find the layers and cracks in the stones. The final step is to brighten things up with a light cream color on the high points of the textured stones. And I'm also dabbing some onto the flat outer stones where I want them to appear to project. Then a few touches of sunlight with a burnt yellow color and the stone portion is finished. But I have some extra space at the bottom, so I'm going to paint that up with a light green, then add some grassy shadows with the dark grays and browns. I used some of the guinea pig's hay to mask off the pattern for this. And then the painted hay looked interesting, so I scattered it back over the ground against the stones for just a bit of extra texture. Let's build that fell beast torso. I cut the base out of some thick corrugated plastic, then wrapped that in plastic poultry netting, formed the shape for the part of the torso that will be bursting through the wall, fastened everything down with cable ties, and trimmed away any excess. The whole thing gets covered in expanding foam, and once it's dry, the excess can be carved away. That's where I got all the foam scraps for making the wall texture, by the way. I left a hole for the neck, but we also need an armhole, so I cut that in, then built out a shoulder socket with aluminum window screen and a lot of hot glue. Then same for the neck. I made a screen sleeve to fit the aluminum flex pipe that will become the neck, built out the neck area with some skin folds, and then did a test fit to make sure everything was going to fit together properly before finalizing anything. The wing needed more bulk in the shoulder, so I added some extra foam to fit that shoulder socket. So this torso needs some skin. I'm using packing foam sheets and spray adhesive, piecing that together to give everything a cohesive texture. Now after the first coat of paint, I realized the shoulder looked kind of funky, so I added some more screen and foam to bulk it out more, and then also caulked the lines where the foam sheets met because the paint made the seams really obvious. So then I just repainted everything. For the neck, I cut a hole in the back of the flex pipe where it needs to attach to the backdrop and taped over the whole thing to hold the shape and cover the sharp edges. I experimented with leaving more wrinkles as skin folds, but the main issue with skinning the neck was that the perforations in the packing sheets bubbled out and made even more seams, so I think a better idea might have been to cover the body and neck in caulking and then use the foam to impress texture so that it would still make a flexible rubbery skin that the paint would bond to, but that would just avoid the whole seam issue. I added some individual bubble wrap bubbles close to where the neck meets the head to transition the textures, and also made a sleeve from window screen and packing foam with some Velcro to cover the joint between the neck and the head. The neck got painted up to match the rest of the body. Now we can put it all together. To hang the wing, I've attached the phone holder from a selfie stick to the back, then anchored the stick to the display stand at an angle through the wall. That way the wing is easy to put up and adjust. I ran some PVC through from the back to create the torso support hook 
and then the wire from the shoulder also hooks into that fitting. The neck and head were more complicated and heavy, so I'm bending some one inch PVC to match the shape of the neck with a connector at one side to attach to the display stand and then flattened connectors at the other ends so the head can screw into that. The neck slides on first and pressure fits into the neck sleeve. And then the head can be screwed in place. Electrical wires run up through the neck, then the skin flap fastened in place to cover the joint. Switch on the LEDs for the head, add some cool lighting, and you've got yourself a menacing Felbeast photo wall. If you think this would be a fun photo op, then hit the like button and let me know in the comments whether you would be fleeing, slaying, or taming the monster. Feel free to expound upon any escape methods, weapons, or magical powers that you might employ. I'm looking forward to reading your answers. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you soon.